Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMail.io. Hey, this is Jack Chi, lead generation officer at salesred.com. Today we have a uh, interview. Uh, today we're joined. Uh, <laughs> oh, was I supposed to say interview? I'm sorry. We have That's, Daniel. Uh, he's great. Go for it. That's right. <laughs> Daniel, he's a content marketer that sends cold email to fuel his growth and make his clients money. Daniel, welcome to the show. Hi, um, yeah, really excited to be here. Uh, I've listened to the podcast for a long time. Yes. Nice. We'd love to hear that. So, uh, Daniel, tell us about um, your background. How did you become a content marketer? Yeah, so um, I guess so to, to briefly explain the journey, uh, when I was in high school, um, I literally Googled like ways to make money online uh, and came across the world of domain name investing. Um, and I got completely immersed in that, um, spent a lot of time on that in high school and college and turned that into like a decently successful side hustle. And then um, right after college, I launched a startup um, uh, called MailGenius.com, me, a marketer, and two other engineers. Um, and it didn't work out so well. I left. MailGenius.com is an email deliverability testing tool. Um, so some people, some listeners may have heard of it. Yep. Um, and then after Mail Genius, or while I was on Mail Genius, I was a marketer and I was wearing a lot of hats. Uh, I did SEO and ads and cold email. And I realized that from among all these channels, I thought that SEO was the least straightforward um, and hardest because SEO essentially is, if you really think about it, it's just high quality writing and writing is hard. <laughs> Um, so then I thought to myself, okay, I, I want to learn, uh, I, I want to work from someone and then uh, ended up working at uh, Grow and Convert and I've, I'm still there and been working there for the last two years and Grow and Convert is a content marketing agency. And uh, yeah, and I also consult uh, for SEO on the side. So that's kind of where I'm at. The journey. And curious to hear, like, why didn't you think that cold email was the least straightforward? Why do you think SEO was? Uh, because I think some of it was a function of having, maybe some of it was already having the expertise in cold email um, during my domaining days because I sent a lot of cold emails. So maybe it seemed straightforward to me. I, I also just think fundamentally in general, the, the way I view cold email is figure out the reasons, all the reasons someone could say no to your cold email and then address all those reasons they say no in your pitch. And to me, that was like a very simple way to get cold email and personalize it. Um, mm. And SEO was also fundamentally the same. Think of it from the pers other person's end. What are their pain points, struggles, and then address those pain points in the content. But it just, for me, it was harder to execute an entire article um, than an email. And there's also a lot of other questions like, what is the importance of backlinks? Mm -hmm. What is the importance of this, this, that? It just, to me, it just seemed harder. There are more questions in my head than cold email. Yeah, maybe with cold email, you have a list. You have a message. Deliverability is a can, big part, of course. Yes, but <laughs> nowadays, the most basic. You could stop there and just send one message to one person and you've done cold email. SEO might not even be like that and uh, that you have to understand so many different facets where if you boil down cold email to its simplest form write somebody something that they're going to write back to and you've got it um, scaling is another monster would you agree Daniel like is it kind of like at its simplest form it's very straightforward and um, kind of logical but then to ramp up it's a different beast or do you see ramp yeah I would ag I would agree with that yeah I think at its simplest form is figuring out who the target audience is and then putting together a list that's extremely targeted, i.e. using filters like if I'm running a WordPress plugin that does X, Y, Z thing, let's only target users who are on WordPress and that mm. match these criteria that make my best audience and then mm. simply sending them an email and then in the pitch, like my thinking is what are the reasons they could say no, i.e. they are not clear on the compensation or it's clearly an automated email, it's not personalized, et cetera, mm -hmm. and then addressing that on the pitch. And that's kind of the way I view that. And to me, that was simple. And SEO, um, 
Yeah, and then scaling is to answer your question is a lot harder. And I've literally hired yeah. Jack in the past to scale it because I thought it was challenging to do that by myself without help. Cool. Um, okay, so take us through like um, the, I'm curious to hear as a marketer how you used cold email I, because I know you've done it for backlinks, for client acquisition yep. and, and more. So maybe you could take us through uh, yeah. how you like to use cold email. Sure. So let me share my screen. Um, okay. <clears throat> right. um, cool. Do you see it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to go over a, a backlink campaign that I ran uh, when I was at Mail Genius. Um, cool. And in, I, we can probably include this doc, but it has the exact email I use um, and some of the stats. So. So yeah, so in yeah. the backlink campaign, there were 101 emails sent uh, and there were 31 total replies. Uh, so around a 30.69% reply rate. Um, I actually don't have nice. the number of positive and negative reply rates written here. And I don't exactly remember what it was, but just off memory, which is maybe inaccurate, I believe <laughs> it was 23 positive and eight negative replies. Um, okay, good comparison. And out of those 23 positive replies, seven backlinks were built, all from articles with organic traffic. Uh, th that's, I think that's like important to mention. Um, when, you, when you send out backlinks and try to get these high quality backlinks from articles with organic traffic, it's gonna be a little harder. These are like the highest targets where you don't just get the power of a backlink, you get the referral traffic from the article. Mm -hmm. um, so it requires, in my opinion, in my opinion, every cold email needs to have extreme personalization, but <laughs> <laughs> I think like this especially is why, this is why we get like along these, so well, Daniel. Yeah, yeah <laughs> especially these emails. So then cool. this is so then here's the exact email, and I'll get into the thought process behind the email. But first, I'll just read the email aloud, out loud for anyone who's listening to the podcast and not seeing this. Thanks. So hi, Etienne. I was actually in, for so number one personalized sentence. I was actually in Belize last summer. My dad's side of the family is Georgian, so we visit often. I miss the khachapuri and wine. Khachapuri is one of the uh, most famous Georgian food. First thing, number two after that, I'm reaching out because I recorded you a one minute video just now, which explains why I'd like to compensate you to main mention mailgenius.com and this post on highlights about the best email testing tools. I like that. And then number three, making a note to compensation. Do I have your permission to send over the details on how I could compensate you for this? Um, and then a PS line, PS always great, great to meet a fellow hockey uh, fanatic. So two personalization. Um, uh, hold so, on, hold on, Daniel. We, uh, I'm so curious, like before we get into the, the background of this, Jeremy, what do you think? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I kind of like it. I think the PS is a missed opportunity. I mean, the personalization are already, already there. So I mm. probably will use the PS differently. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of, do you have, do I have your permission? But maybe that's my European side because I know some US people don't, don't really take care of that or don't really care for this. Okay. What about, what well, about you, you, Jack? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, you got something. I think it's I had something to do with this campaign. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, right. sorry. I actually forgot to mention, how did I forget to mention? I hired Jack for consulting to come up with this campaign. Oh, there you go. Um, I know Jack yeah, didn't I have totally any problem to with, do I have your permission? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. But I like it. It's good that I didn't mention it. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's actually good. I'm glad you didn't mention that until we got mm -hmm. uh, the first reactions because it, it tends to color. Did, but uh, I completely forgot right? anyway because we did that pre-recording. Pre cool, cool. But um, the PS, well, yeah, I would probably use something else. Um, like an opportunity to say, you know, um, you know, maybe like, you know, if links doesn't work, we, we got also, by the way, an affiliate programs or whatever, something different, mm. like you're sort of like mm. giving a chance for people to still reply. Yes, but on a different things. And since it's just a PS and it works or, um, yeah, or like, you know, full transparency, you know, whatever I work for or something nice to build up uh, trust. So, but, but it's good. It's good. I like it. It's basically cool. what we preached here. So good stuff. Jack, you're actually doing what you're preaching. Good stuff. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, okay. Um, and, rate. That's good. And Daniel, obviously, this is 
uh, your personalization and look, that's that's hard to do. And it is one of the reasons that you send a hundred of these, you get seven backlinks. I mean, I think that's a huge win for any content marketer out there. And let's not undervalue how much uh, credit is for that those personalization lines there. So anyways, and, uh, take us through the thought. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and likewise, let's not <laughs> undervalue um, your help in this. Thanks, man. I think, I think in general, like with consulting, you, you take two actions. <laughs> And almost always the first action without the consultant is just going to generate way results, way worse results than the action with the consultant, with a good mm. consultant. And just like Jack, um, like I, I wouldn't, like, this would not have happened. So, yeah. Okay. Glad to hear, man. So, so take us through like um, thinking behind it. Let's go yeah, into that. So, so, yeah. So kind of what happened is like, I, th I believe is you literally asked me, hey, Daniel, could you come up with all the reasons someone could say no? Uh, all the reasons the recipient could say no. And also, and I also just thought to myself, what are the problems of the majority of backlink emails I've received over the years? And this is just like ad hoc what well, I wrote I have back to stop then. you here. Like, that's a sound bite. Come up with all the reasons they could say no, which is in line, but fundamentally different than how we've been framing that is like write out all the benefits and then break each one into follow up emails. That's kind of the, the, the pitch or, or the the mantra here but it's interesting to put it on its head and say why would they say no and address that yeah address the so i like that yeah up emails yeah like is it pricey is that going to cost a lot you know those all the right. things are going to take me time to set up and stuff like that and so yeah, that's kind of a benefit but it's like a concern as well yeah to some extent right so, so yeah um thanks for letting me pause there um w let's let's get into like some of these objections there yeah, totally. So, uh, one, one, so the first kind of, I wouldn't call this really objection, but just in general, some, the reason why someone could say no is reach out to people who clearly want to link to you um, due to not doing proper research. So just mm -hmm. to give an extreme example, like there's sites like HubSpot, for example, huge sites where you just know, like intuitively, they're not going to link to us. Like it just doesn't make sense on their end. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but then like even when doing proper research and reaching out to someone who would likely link to you and, and would find, I think would find value in doing that. Mistake number one, don't personalize the emails. Mm. Um, and mm. uh, I, I think like you guys have spoken about that at length in the podcast. Um, mm. And then mistake number two, don't tell the person receiving the backlink email what's in it for them. Let's just ask without showing any indication of compensation. This is a yeah. really common mistake. Like, I know you guys get tons of backlink emails and it's just kind of mind boggling how many people are just like, please link to me. Like what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who mm -hmm. are you? Why? It just doesn't make any sense. Mistake yeah. number three, don't show how linking to you would make the article better for their audience. And just, just as because, a side note, because it's still quite nice to share experience. I do get a lot of those people saying like, hey, you have a nice article on the 20 best cold outreach email or whatever. Can I, can, you know, can you add that? And I always reply with an atrocious number. And then they come back and say, well, we only had like $75 as a budget or whatever. And it's like, can we still make it happen? It's like, and just, just reply with the same outrageous number, which is like 5K or whatever kind of thing. It's just like, it's so easy to get rid of people that way. It's, That's it's funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and let's see. So then, yeah. So then not showing how the article would make it, it better for their audience because they don't know your company first. They need to be sold on the company. And two, they, they need to be sold on, will, given this article, will the company fit, will, Will it make sense to mention them? So I'll get to that in a second when we do to address that because it's not mm -hmm. obvious in the original email. It was actually done in the video. Mm -hmm. And then mistake number four is don't make an attempt to show that they'll make that person's job to link to you easier. So from there, and it's like, okay, cool. I want to link to you, but uh, I have to log into WordPress. Figure out the exact space to link to you. Then which copy to use to link to them, et cetera. All mm -hmm. that is a headache. So in, so in summary, um, not personalizing, not telling them what's in it for them not showing mm -hmm. how, the, the, how linking to us would make it better for their audience and for not mm -hmm. making an attempt to show that linking to the, would not making it, not making it seem like you'll make their job easy to link to. So here's mm -hmm. what we did to address that. 
Um, to address problem number one, which is don't personalize, pretty straightforward. Like, um, you don't this is number one. Personalization. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just you do personalization. But I think something important to mention there is that it wasn't just like any personalization. It wasn't, hey, yeah. I don't know. Your stuff, I, like general stuff. Yeah, basically. yeah. It wasn't, hey, love your stuff. It was like, Big fun. I literally, for some for people. Years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, so for some people, I literally, I would Google their name. I would open their podcast. I would listen to their podcast, sometimes for mm. as many as 10 minutes, just to mm. grab something natural sounding, and that blows them away. Or we just Google mm. their name plus interview, or yeah, th- just just going the extra mile. Like, I was actually in Belize last summer, et cetera, going the extra yeah. mile. I think, so when they open the email and they see something that personalized, yeah, they're like, oh my goodness, I'm yeah. blown away. Right. So that's that so then second thing not telling the person we send the backlink email what's in it for them in the email we mentioned hey like we will compensate you essentially uh, that was mentioned mm-hmm. in the email and also in the video so i i recorded you a one minute video just now and in that video and towards the end of the video i mentioned that like i'll compensate them so it's mentioned multiple times mm-hmm. number mm-hmm. three this is an interesting Sorry, one uh, daniel how uh, did you actually compensate them uh just cold hard cash <laughs> <laughs> yeah are you looking for a price range jeremy yeah yeah so, why not like what, what was the price like did you actually do it based on their domain reputation like yeah it was based use? on the number of it was based on the traffic the article was getting and also the relevancy to our product so it was an oh. article like best email testing tools and our tool literally is an email testing tool like we're gonna pay whatever it takes to be there like we would have paid as much as a thousand even uh, to get a back thing like that. Do you got like a um, uh, type of range? Like you're comfortable just sharing the sort of like range you were going? Yeah, to? range uh, was probably three hundred to five hundred. Got it. Cool. Again, these are really high quality backlinks, all that have all from articles with organic traffic. Makes sense. Um, I and, think and one as, thing to mention. Yeah, oh yeah, go for it. I was gonna ask as the SEO content marketer that invested in these backlinks hindsight was it a no-brainer did you guys um were you happy with that investment yes i think hindsight no-brainer and male genius is ranking now for almost highly for almost every key term by key term i mean high purchase intent keywords like email deliverability testing tool etc it's ranking highly for them so it paid off that's great um yeah, I guess and, if you uh, think yeah. about it, like uh, if if you're paying Google for those clicks, you're going to rack up three hundred, five hundred, one thousand yeah, dollars of traffic very quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a lot Mark. more to SEO than backlinks, mm. um, but backlinks certainly are a factor, and certainly a factor that matter. Cool. Um, okay. Thank God we don't have to get into all those uh, factors yeah. <laughs> of SEO because yeah, you'd lose just... me immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's uh, so, let's carry on. What's next? Yeah. So. Okay, this is don't show how linking to you would make the article better for their audience because they don't know your company, they need to be sold on it. To address that objection in the personalized video, which let me open it up on, and put it on no sound. I literally went inside their article, changed the HTML. Oh, and, and how it would look like. That's yeah, nice. and I put together a copy for how to include our, our product in there and what that copy would look like. So you did um, this video for every everyone. So you actually showed yes, every single person. Culture. Okay. It was really time consuming. I, yeah. I would open up each article, read it from top to bottom to find the one perfect place to mention us, and then I would have to write specific copy for them. Which, to be fair, normally the copy was pretty similar, but sometimes it was different. So it's like you have to like start writing an article essentially while you're doing this, or part of an article. Uh, um, Jeremy, so is, would you agree this is? as good as personalization can possibly get with the two snippets plus a custom video with custom HTML. I, I don't know how to beat that. Yeah, I, I, assuming the person doesn't think the video is generic and actually look at it, then yes, that makes total sense, right? I think this is the biggest risk is that people think like, oh, it's a generic video, I'm not going to click on it and therefore they won't get the opportunity I to f- understand this is really personalized. So on that, Jeremy, I'm thinking Without the first line, you might really run into that risk. But I mm-hmm. think to tell someone that you love going to Georgia, you know, well, you visit quite frequently. As, as and if you tell saying, them you recorded. 
you're, you're right. As we keep saying, you know, the first personalization line gives you the ticket to, you know, people reading the mm -hmm. rest, right? Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah, it would almost be, it would be terrible to create all these videos and not personalize and, and not have, because of not having the personalization, not having them click on the video. Yeah. Um, but that could have been the PS for me, actually, because a PS mm. really means like personalization. So it could have been like PS. I recorded a video for how it will look on this article specifically. I was like, mm -hmm. there, there will be absolutely like no mm. confusion as to what is used. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Anyway. And unfortunately, um, though, we do have that embed that comes at the bottom of the email and it does have like screenshots. So that person technically oh, is true. seeing their website, right? So yeah. it's... Yeah, yeah, you have exactly. to make sure the thumbnail is actually their website straight away because they're but it is. on it. Yeah, I think it, it by nature that video always has that as a thumbnail, right, Daniel? Like, here's the video; it's your um, site. Boom. Yes, it might have changed. But when you scroll down, yeah, it could actually be like a random, you know, random thumbnail where you don't only see the text, and so therefore it wouldn't look. Yeah, good. exactly. Right, yeah. something to check. But okay, um, let's let's keep going. This is great. Great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So uh, just for audio listeners, in case. Um, that was a little unclear. I'll just read a part of the script. Um, and what I did was I actually played around with the HTML just to show you where you can mention our tool. So this is what it looked like before, and I would highlight it. And I actually added this part myself so you can envision how it would fit within the article if you edited it. If you want, you can pause right now and just read the new highlighted part really quickly. But pretty much the point is that, and, and, and I won't dive into the, the, the Essentially, pretty much the point is that now I'm selling them on how our tool fits in the article and why it legitimately makes their audience's life better. <laughs> like, of course, an email deliverability testing tool is blah, 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 is helpful because without it, emails would land in spam. And I think your readers could actually get a lot of benefit out of it. And our team allocated a good amount of resources, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then I just mentioned I'll compensate them. It's, it's interesting because if you're actually contacting another content marketer, most that who is actually very focused on SEO, he wouldn't necessarily care about that, but he may be more receptive. Is like you know, adding this tool will probably add you more traffic more than actually you know, um, it will help your readers. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think this is it's more you're right, it's less about adding. I, I wouldn't say their main motivation is oh, will this truly make the article better? It's more <laughs> yes, like exactly. will it will it just make does it even will it make us look bad? Okay, yeah, cool. It doesn't make is, us look this bad. Is important. I agree. Like, mm -hmm. they actually affect us negatively. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if it's clear, and I just try to make it clear that it's not, and if anything, it even makes it better. Mm. Cool. Love it. This is good. Um, it, it's kind of like the campaign. mystifying the, the backlink outreach, but um, word of caution, just with the amount of personalization recommended here, like Daniel said, I think it's critical to only send this to the right people like like you, you said would hubspot backlink probably not and mm -hmm. and don't waste your time don't waste your time there right and then again <laughs> you're not sending this to like brand new blogs either right mm -hmm. like you, you're going to get a lot out of it when they do yeah, need to throw a link down so yeah um hmm. okay <laughs> that's just like my uh, yeah no totally thing, yeah totally I, it took like it took a long time to make each video sometimes i had to mm. restart it sometimes i had to restart it five times so it was that bad. Mm. um and then i had to like export the video to youtube and that took time and then mm. finding the personalization well, for each person you wouldn't sometimes... do it with loom honestly you wouldn't do it with um... <laughs> exactly yeah true that would be you, way you get notified when they open it and watch it which also yeah true. true but of course you wouldn't probably all oh, the thumbnail maybe Anyway, um, why did you actually stop at 100? Like, why not 300? It was like, um, for you, that was enough 100 to cover the market? Or due to, it was due to or? a lack of resources. Yeah. If we had more resources, we would have invested yeah, in more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Couldn't you, do you, don't you think you could have just hired, like, a, I don't know, a student straight out of school to actually do that? Um, yeah, totally. I think in, in retrospect, um, this is very outsourceable. <laughs> Like, especially like finding the personalized line, even the video itself, it's, I use the same the script video, each yeah. time. So all of this is highly outsourceable. And if anyone wants to delegate this, I think it's very doable. Yeah, but probably not without like some, 
some good training. Like you'd have to show them like, Hey, yeah. here's how I Google it. Not it's basically like what, for the yeah. personalization. I agree, but not for the video. The video is a simple operator manual. hundred percent. Right? You do that. You do, this, you do that. Boom. You outsource 10, $10 an hour. You get, you know, two, three, four, three videos, maybe an hour, four, five. Uh, it doesn't cost much at all to do those videos anymore. Once you got your operation manual in place. Yeah. I've spoken to somebody who hired like aspiring actors to take <laughs> over their video. No, yeah, like that, that was their thing. It wasn't a salesperson. It was someone who was used to speaking in front of the microphone and camera. Um, and they said, this is the script. Can you please do a hundred of these a day? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Granted that that may come with a different set of problems to right. um, find and hire, uh, I don't know, actors. I don't know if that's like, an easy group to yeah, work with, or, or maybe you got, you got a lot of those people. Okay, who do voiceover for your videos. Yeah, you know, so mm. maybe they would be interested in such things to make a bit of money. So, inside. yeah, that's a good point, uh, Daniel. Anything? Uh, I want to make sure we we get to these nuggets that uh, you've, you've laid out here. This is good stuff. Um, what's what's next here? Uh, what's next? Uh, and if, if nothing, then then um, <laughs> I'm happy to move on. This this is like. I can do tap yeah, I think one, one, one thing I want to mention is, uh, so as the person doing the videos, I don't think that was a strength of mine. Like looking back at the videos, it's embarrassing. Like I don't think they were okay. good. And like, okay. so not only would, delegate, would delegating to someone give you those benefits of just, you don't have to handle this. Maybe mm. they're just better at it than you. <laughs> um, Fair. Um, okay, it's a good point. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, and you should see the responses. Like, I think a lot of brands are, are afraid to run backlink campaigns because it would hurt their brand. The responses to this were like so positive. It was like, this is the best backlink email I've ever received. This is this, this is that. It's like one of those emails I think that gets really good response and shows your brand in a positive light. So if you've been hesitant to send backlinks because of that concern, maybe this is like the, the push to, to, to do it. Um, yeah, I don't see this backfiring. No, no. Can you mm -hmm. uh, maybe stop uh, the sharing if you? Yes, I'll stop the sharing. Yeah. Cool. No, that's really good stuff. Um, I like it. I'm already seeing ways to actually scale this sort of campaigns to more than. Yeah, I, we have actually my uh, one of the engineers on my team. Um, well, we realized that the scripts were identical, or not? Sorry, not it, parts of the scripts were very similar, and we started thinking of this idea of a tool that just automatically there's a human saying your script out loud maybe this exists already i'm sure it actually does but just if anyone's listening looking uh -huh. for a business idea maybe uh -huh. i mean there's a demand there what is it like what? D degrees or DC yeah i know what you're, it's like the, it used to be lira bird it used to be lira bird and now here give me a second i'm going to pull it up because they've they've kind of cracked this uh mm. give me a second cool. Clear bird. And their, their video is absolutely hilarious. So it's, it's awesome. Well, so what it does, the script, the that's script what it is. is yeah. D E S C R I P T dot com. And what it does, What's Daniel, this is, this, this should have been mm. for, should have been <laughs> the thing to be used. But basically, you record a script and then where you need to customize, you basically, manually like edit like iMovie and just yeah you paste text. text and so the clever thing though is it uses your voice to read what you wrote in the text and I'll just a full disclaimer I looked uh, pretty deeply into this because I think video personalization is important and I do not think the technology is there today I can mm. detect a robotic sound and to me that would just like blow up in the face of all this effort and resources like why are you going to send point. an almost good like if i got that mm. i'd be like you almost tricked me you bad you know like it's <laughs> no. it's dangerous so either mm -hmm. wait it till it's backfire. perfect and then of course when it is perfect what's going to happen everybody mm. everybody is going to be using it and it'll, yeah. it'll be discounted it won't be <laughs> like oh great another guy who wrote me an ai video so kind mm -hmm. of it, right like it, it might even backfire <laughs> for those of us actually sending good videos. Right. But what are you going to do? Um, do you see, Daniel, by the way, a question for oh, you yeah. guys. Do you see the future, maybe that being the future of, that, of e cold email in general, that video works so well that 
10, 15 years from now, just so many people use it? I think there's going to be loads of personalization hacks and all of them will have their moment and then slowly peter out into mm. like the baseline. And then we're going to come together in 2030 and say, so what works? And we're going to say, well, right list, right message, right time. Right. <laughs> Just like we've been saying forever. Mm. Um, what, what do you think, Jeremy? Yeah, it's a loaded question. Um, it could be simply that um, people don't connect that much on email anymore, like next generation coming up. Like mm. I know, for example, at our company, we're barely using email anymore. We're all on Slack, for example, but you know, other generation, they may be on different things. So it's still difficult to figure out what's going to come. But I think um, for better or worse, yeah, um, email is there to stay, but no one can predict yeah. the future, basically, right. right? And usually the people in the industry are the worst at predicting the future, to be honest. <laughs> That's uh, true. Too often, yeah. Louis. Just stay, yeah, stay sharp uh, because like look, it was you like what, like yeah. um, the uh, the uh, owner, oh, who's uh, his bank CEO saying like, yeah, Bitcoin's is a scam, and it's like you know those, those sort of <laughs> thing. Like you know when they are like thinking that in the world, then it's it's hard to to see what mm. the vision is. And Good obviously, point. I wouldn't like to think I'm like that, but you know, I know I know how human works, and and it's mm -hmm. like that. So. Don't trust ourselves, right? Well, um, that said, this may be a good opportunity to segue. Uh, you, Danny, you played around with multi-channel campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, it, like any insights there, um, feel free to share anything or nothing on, on if we should be focusing on um, contacting prospects or leads or potential uh, potentials outside of email. Yeah. So. So just for some context, I hired Jack's agency. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how long it was, maybe six months ago. And uh, for, it was for the purpose of domain name investing. So in the domain name space, um, just for some quick context, like yeah. the, I, in my opinion, the best way to make a profit is to reach out to, to people that own names directly, like cold email them, call, call them, et cetera. That's how you get the best deals. And scaling that was the challenge. I wasn't sure how to do that properly. Uh, so I hired Jack and he mm -hmm. built, and it was, in, I, as I said earlier, like I've been listening to the podcast like forever. Um, yeah. I, was telling, I was telling you guys before the call, that I literally have a, a, a document with 50 pages of notes from Quick Mail Podcast. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, so I always wanted to work with Jack and it was, just like what I thought it would be <laughs> incredible. And we oh. built a system where the way it worked is it was multi-channel, um, multi-channel due to deliverability issues. So first it would send, uh, I believe it was a text. Um, then if they didn't respond to the text, it would, it would go to a call. That's if right. They didn't respond That's to right. the call, it would go to an That's email. Right. If they didn't respond to the email, it would be a LinkedIn message. And if they didn't respond to the LinkedIn yeah. message, maybe it would be a quitter depending on like how bad i want the name right. <laughs> um yeah, that, and i think that, like, that was cool it, some it, i think someone may be listening to this and thinking oh my god this is way too aggressive <laughs> i think there's certainly something to that especially when you're selling something in our case i was making offers to buy something and that's i think completely different and the dynamics of that is like people will want that email like hey would you sell blah blah, blah for a hundred thousand dollars like that's not the worst email to receive. Um, right. Yeah, can I um, give you some cash is one of the best email to receive for sure. I think yeah. So. But totally even still, cool. even still, Daniel, like in this space, that pitch was, um, I'm not going to say that it was overdone because it's still offering money, but these people are pitched very frequently. So um, I would say because of yeah. email deliverability and because of, um, the, the folks we were contacting were difficult to, mm -hmm. to get, I mean, they were, they own these highly sought after domain names and it was important to hit them from a few angles. And, um, I, I mean, just one more like thought on this is I did appreciate that 
um, we were like, okay, if we could get the mobile numbers, which in a lot of instances we could, we were using this like text step because it was automated. It got great response rates and it would remove a lot of people from our email steps, thus reducing the load on our uh, deliverability. I, I thought it was like a, a great use of this. Um, just as my yeah. side, uh, uh, yeah. Total, no, totally. And I think it shows seriousness because most of them only receive email. Mm. Um, but texts are much rarer. And I think shows initiative and oh, this person actually wants my domain. I think another thing is sim mm. fundamentally similarly to like that backlink example was thinking through why they would say no. And one of the reasons is because they get so many emails when there's no offer in it, they almost immediately assume it's one of the typical emails that isn't gonna lead to anywhere. Mm. And because of that, we included an offer in each email and it was not a low offer. It was actually really close to what I would actually pay. Like. Like I can maybe shot myself in the foot negotiation wise, but I thought it would improve the reply rate. Um, and um, make Perhaps up for the, that. So. But getting that response was like pretty key. This is akin to reaching out to homeowners that are not selling their house yet <laughs> and, and getting in before they, they put it to market. Um, yeah, and it. Hmm. Almost yeah, like carving with... out this blue ocean for you <laughs> as opposed to like waiting for an auction, all right? Yeah, and the biggest, re the biggest reason I actually like, wanted to set this up was the follow-up aspect of it because the main owners typically, typically deals happen when, when the right timing happens, i.e. they need cash fast. They, just something happened in their life where they're ready to sell for like a wholesale number essentially. And there was mm -hmm. a follow-up implemented into the system and it was implemented really well where you would just wake up every day and then it's like, here are the follow-ups you need to do. And then you just click mm -hmm. a button and you type the email or type directly into the system. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, re to me, that was the biggest thing. That's how you get those deals done. And probably similar to real estate, you probably yeah. need, it's just about the timing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, Jeremy and I, we, we talk a lot about timing here. And the reality is you don't always have that perfect moment <laughs> in your database. You don't. You don't know when they're discussing, hey, we need a cash uh, advance real quick. And so that's, that's uh, I think, why years ago doing those high volume campaigns, even for zero personalization and honestly crappy messaging, you still got bites because you could reach, you know, 300, mm -hmm. 400, 500 people a day sometimes. And you, you're going to get a percentage of responses. And even if it's half a percent, uh, for some companies, that's enough to say, let's rock and roll. But um, alas, today, we don't live in that world where we can shoot for that kind of volume. Yeah, definitely. And I think like for multi-channel, one of the reasons why this was so important is that one lost deal like could be like 15, 20K. If an email ends in spam, that could be 20K. So like the deal, oh, we, the deal we closed came from Tux. Mm -hmm. It was like a mm -hmm. big deal. What if their email failed to spam? What if text was the only way to reach them? Um, <laughs> Correct. I think that's like a huge deal. I guess it's a big deal for any number, even like, but especially for those higher up, like five, six figure deals. Yeah. Yeah. It's, especially it's a if you're small yeah. and it's a limit. It was a finite contact list. <laughs> like, I don't want right, to waste so that list. That's a good point. Jeremy, what do you think about this? Like almost rule, like the fewer prospects you have, the more channels you should be using. I like it. Um, I'm thinking the next thing is basically the next best thing is to compile a list of people who know that person and contact them. You know, if, <laughs> if each deal is so important and which is basically what um, networking is about, right? So. That's interesting. How would you do that if, yeah, I, I mean, you would just- A different cast, right? Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to have this like... cast rolling for six hours. Um, <laughs> Have to be Fair. Cool of that. Okay. But, but this is really good insight. I really like that. And mm. I know we've yeah, one cast when we talked about like having a very limited list, but I think it's it's a great addition to really think of you know number of channels mm. you're going after or how many ways you can hit this list. Yeah, one um one insight from kind of this initiative for anyone listening is that I thought an interesting business idea is so just to preface, I don't know the real estate market that well, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but just from my limited knowledge, what if you, uh, this is, 
you position your agency as we only do buy side emails. Like I want to buy your property. Yeah. Let's just say. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And you started working with someone in the Hollywood region of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And the service was we send emails to like homeowners who meet these criteria who are likely to sell, for example. Let's just say, oh, it's listed on Zillow already. And you just want to make offers that are below a certain amount. Um, so it's two, two Hollywood owners and XYZ zip, zip code. So you do that for, the, for that real estate agent in Hollywood or that investor in Hollywood. Um, and then that works. And then you expand it to other regions in Los Angeles. And then you expand it to other states. And it's the same exact service operationally. Exactly yeah. the same except different areas. I thought that was like interesting. No, it's, it, it is. But then I've been approached for this kind of campaign. Of like, hey, we mm. got... They purchase a list, X number of homeowners, usually in the several mm. thousands, this zip code, let's reach out to them. And then you run into, there are a lot of Gmails. It's just so hard to deliver. Mm. Holy cow. I, really? I, I basically, you know, kind of told them like, hey, like load it into stuff. Facebook and try and do retargeting. <laughs> I can't help you. I, I mean, maybe that was bad advice. I, I just don't know how to get around reaching a thousand people with Gmails mm. that, because it's, that list is hard to come by. And a lot of times it's scraped together. It's old. It's, you get bounces. It's just difficult. Um, Jeremy, would you say the same thing? High pass, half pass. Good pass. Half pass. <laughs> but if you're listening, this you can crack that. This is not where the world is at. You could have worked yeah. you know, a few years back, but this is over. Got it. Yeah, but, that's interesting though, retargeting. Right. Some people that's, use that's... inbox rotation. They got uh, 1,200 inboxes. And then twelve hundred. Wow! And just rotate to get through the list. Oh my goodness! But that's wild. <laughs> for me, I don't like those sort of things. How do you even have? What is it like a? Like it grabs one name from the like naming registry or something and assigns it to an inbox. Know. And if you got a thousand inboxes and you got you know forty thousand prospect, then technically it's only a thousand per inbox. <laughs> oh, four. Uh, 40, sorry. Oh, wow. No, that's Bill. I just... think you mentioned. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I think you mentioned a really interesting nugget, uh, Jack, which is I just tell them to retarget. I feel like I don't want that to like slip through the cracks for anyone that's listening. I think like if you're running Facebook ads, one of the most efficient ways to spend your money is to come up with the same email list you would have sent cold email to and just plug that yeah. into Facebook. Obviously, a lot of those emails are going to be business emails. So maybe an extra step to turn the business email into personal, personal email yeah. and then plug it into Facebook. But I think that's a really good use of paid ads yeah. budget. Yeah. The, the, uh, and why? Because you're, you're kind of handpicking the people that see it as opposed to hoping Facebook does it for you, right? Right, right. So, Daniel, um, we're coming up to, to the time here i'm i'm just wondering if you have any other um i guess takeaways from from your experience with cold email as a marketer for our listeners um while we're while we're here yeah um i think one or one last insight is yeah um which i'm, I'm going to use my experience in domain investing to relay this to cold email okay is that when i got into the domain name space I spent a year making so many mistakes, not making any revenue. It was bad. And after a year, I just realized, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I need to talk to someone who knows what they're doing. And I made a list of 10 like prominent domain name inv- or around 10 prominent domain name investors and just sent them an, an email and said, Hey, like, I'll like, can we get on the call and mention that I'll, I, I want to pay them for their time, which yeah. I think that's a really important thing in this to show them you appreciate their time Why by not? offering to pay. Yeah. Um, okay. Even if, they, which a lot of people say I'll do it for free anyways. And when they said that, I insisted on paying further because to show right. how much I appreciate their time and build that relationship. Yeah. But anyway, so I sent those emails. Then I got on a call with like around 10 people and like almost all of them said the same thing, which was essentially like, or I don't know if like it's interesting to the audience, but they all said like something really similar that I need to do. And um, there was a pattern there. So if I had only sorry, reached out to you, one, you can't do that. I'm sorry. What was it? <laughs> How, oh, okay, okay. Well, Let us I judge if it's interesting for yes, us. Yes, yes. <laughs> what was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, totally. So 
a common mistake that happens is like, and what I did was, oh, these domains are selling on GoDaddy for $50,000. Oh, I guess I'll just go to GoDaddy, buy some domains for $8 that are available for registration. And these domains are better than the one I saw on GoDaddy for 50,000. So I'll just sell it for the same amount. It's so very gullible looking back, but just such a common mistake. And I bought those available domains. In reality, they're available for a reason. They're horrible usually, <laughs> and you're probably not going to sell them. The way to make the money and what the advice was, no, 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 like buy domains that expire in auctions. Like those are already, those are value domains, one. And two, reach out to domain owners. You make the money on the buy, reaching out privately to owners where there's no comp or less competition than auctions. Sure. That's sure. how you make the most. So that was the advice. Um, and they're like, drop all, never read high register domain again. Just focus mm -hmm. your time on this instead. All of them said the same thing. Wow. And I was doing the exact opposite thing, what they said. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, and, and there was this pattern. If I had only reached out to one person and asked for their help and they told me the same thing, maybe I would have, one, maybe they were wrong. Maybe they would have been wrong. Yeah. Sure. Two, maybe I just wouldn't have done what they said. Because like mm. there's this ego thing, no, 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 I'm doing it right. They just don't mm -hmm. know what they say. Yeah, but yeah. if you hear one, if you hear the same thing from 10 people, you know you should do it and it just, you're more confident. Yeah, it just, I, I, I like that approach. And I think someone listening may think, well, if I'm, there's 10 people and I just say it's $200 an hour, that's $2,000 mm. versus I can just pay one person 200 bucks. But in my yeah. head, it's like, well, that $1,800 difference, if you make the wrong decision, if you get the wrong you could lose way more than 1800 if you make the right Good decision point. you could well make up the 1800 yeah and there's so few good consultants that i almost feel like it helps talk to a bunch of them to figure out who's the best one and then you have this resource kind of like yeah well jack essentially i'm like oh my goodness i Thank found you. the best person <laughs> called email or whatever um or an xyz industry yeah. and and that's really hard and rare to find in general so Anyway, okay. so that's a long like, it's, way of it's almost like, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, right. What we, no, go for it. Go for it. It's almost like crowdsourcing expertise. Yeah, totally. I actually reached out to Jeremy back in, Did you? Uh, I think yeah, through clarity.fm. It was <laughs> through clarity.fm and you pretty much said, yeah. hey, Daniel, like, nice. Oh, like, I like I your tactic sort of reach out through clarity, but no. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember. And, and then I got some shit from clarity for refusing a client. I, and um, and then immediately I just jumped jumped up my my uh, my price because I actually didn't right. want to. You know, I think it was like something ridiculous, like fifty bucks an hour and so on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. You should have reached out the better way, which is like sometimes I send my calendar for like, hey, if if I can help anyone, here's my calendar. I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah, totally. But I'll That's make nice. it up to you, Dan Daniel. We we find. Yeah, a way. <laughs> so, I did actually. I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so by the way, like if anyone's listening and they're looking for consultants, I, my personal opinion is I don't like someone who only does consulting not, and, and doesn't, isn't day in, day out in the weeds. Same. Not saying there aren't mm -hmm. good ones like that, just generally, I think not. Um, and if you're looking for someone in the weeds, clarity.fm, there's mm -hmm. all these people that just do the, day, the job day in and out. Also, I think it's called growthmentor.com. Cool. Uh, if you're looking for that so okay so that, that, that's the one when we're saying that like in in cold email um i would do the same thing like if i'm oh. whether i'm new to the industry or not but especially if i'm new um mm -hmm. i'll reach out okay sorry as i'm explaining this i'm like you don't need to reach out to anyone just reach out to jack why are you going <laughs> to <laughs> check check your mailbox um, for the uh yeah, for the yeah, okay, for cash. For thank you daniel <laughs> yeah like i'm being serious yeah, like it's right. like yeah. i've already wasted the money on a bunch of cold email consultants like just hire jack and thank yeah that's, that's literally my, it, my last nugget is hire jack <laughs> okay you're the man all right well uh daniel tell us uh where we can reach you i know you're offering um uh, well, services to do PPC, uh, content marketing, maybe SEO. Like, how, how can we get in touch yeah, to uh, find yeah, out more? We, yeah, we, we had in touch on content marketing, which is like essentially what I've been doing <laughs> for the last two years, almost full time. Um, yeah. But so if you're looking for help with content marketing, um, specifically, like, so especially if you're a B2B SaaS and you're mm -hmm. looking for leads, not vanity metrics like traffic, you can reach me. Uh, uh, let's just say my personal email address, 
uh, D-L-E-V-I-812 at gmail.com. Uh, that's D-Levi-812 at gmail.com. Um, yeah. Perfect. So. Well, we'll put a link in the show notes. And um, yeah, d- definitely uh, pick Daniel's brain. Uh, uh-huh. You'll be uh, better off for it. Thank you so much uh, for joining and, and sharing awesome. some of your experience with uh, using cold email to fuel some content marketing, Daniel. It's great to have you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions, like feel free to shoot them my way. Uh, happy to answer them comprehensively. Yeah, and and I can okay. bet uh, D- Daniel is uh, super knowledgeable, very helpful, and, and an all around good person to to know. So uh, definitely reach out. He's got my stamp of approval. Wow. All right. Well, well, well thank you. All right. It was it was fun. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Daniel. You bet. Bye. See ya.